Hello, everybody. I want to give you a devotion here uh, out of Second Peter chapter one. Uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, after you get saved, what happens next? What should you expect? Uh, what should we, we what should we be striving for? Um, after salvation, there's what's called sanctification, and it means growing in the grace of the Lord. And I'm going to tell you this: everybody goes through this in different ways. Uh, again, what you what you have conquered in your life, I might be still struggling with, and what I've conquered in my life, you might be still struggling with. And let me say this: there's a misconception about salvation that a lot of people struggle with, and that's, well, I'm saved. That means I stop sinning. That is not the case. We sin every day. Paul says, "I die daily." You're gonna. That's exactly what happens. We're gonna sin. We're gonna fail. We're gonna, you know, um, be things that we're ashamed of. Uh, and, and, you know, and we 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 beat ourselves up because you know we're sitting there saying, "Well, you know, we let the devil convince us that because we're saved, uh, that you know, uh, saved people don't do this." Uh, and I'm going to tell you, that is straight from hell, that's straight from the devil. Um, one thing that's different between the lost person and the saved person is we have, we have our sins forgiven. We, we have our sins covered by the blood. And too many Christians live their life in defeat because they're trying to work up to this thing called salvation and trying to live uh, a, a life of, uh, with no regrets and everything else. I, I'm thankful for the path that God brought me through. Uh, f until the day I was saved, I'm I'm thankful for the path that he got uh, that I've been brought through after I've been saved. And let me let me tell you a secret: just because that you're saved doesn't mean that your life's going to be easy. In fact, the Bible teaches that the actually is going to become more difficult. Why? Because in Romans chapter eight, it says that there's a spiritual warfare that goes on. There's a battle between flesh and spirit. Uh, but there's some things that we need to do to add to our life. To help us through and conquer that that, that battle, uh, if you go over to Second Peter chapter one, I want you to look at this in verse three, start, uh, starting in verse three. It says, "According to His divine power, He hath given unto all us and pertaining unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that He hath called us to glory and virtue." One of the things that we need to strive for is to get to know God better. Uh, what God knows us more than we even know ourselves, but our we ought to strive to get to know God the way. God knows us, and and again, you'll never know God the way God knows us. However, we ought to strive to know Him better. But verse four, whereby are given an exceeding great and precious promises that uh, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lusts. And besides all this, giving all diligence. Now here's one. Which, here's one. Here's the here's the basis for this devotion. You have got to add. An, to your faith virtue. The Bible says we are saved by grace through faith. It is not our faith that saves us. It's God's grace that saves us. And it's our faith in that grace is what gives us is what saves us from our sins. And that's exactly our works can never save us. But our faith in the work that was done at Calvary is what saves us. Once that's settled then we still we got to start adding onto uh, things, adding onto our faith, and it just doesn't end at salvation. Uh, again, you didn't work anything to get salvation, but you can't work. Uh, you don't work to get saved, but you uh, you work because you are saved. And and again, there's no work salvation. I don't. There's just no such thing. However, once salvation takes place, and once our faith is is uh, is secure into the faith of what God did or Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. It's time to grow up. Uh, we had, we got to take from the milk of the word to the meat of the word. And there's some things that Peter says that we need to do. It says you know we need to add under our faith virtue. Um, you know, and then after that it's uh, add to virtue knowledge. We ought to strive to know God better. And then after that it says knowledge temperance. Um, temperance is self-control. Uh, it's something that we need to keep in mind that people are watching our life and we can't do the things that we used to do. You, can, you know, Christians ought never to be in places they ought never to be um, because, again, people are watching our lives. You are a walking Bible. And, uh, and again, Peter says, listen, you need to... And again, it's steps. You, you go from faith to virtue 
and virtue, virtue knowledge, and then knowledge temperance, which is self-control. The, the more we get to know God, the more self-control we have of ourselves. Because again, we're trying to walk in the spirit, not the flesh. And then after that, and this is what I struggle with, I live in Northern Virginia. I struggle with this thing called patience. Uh, it says add to um, knowledge uh, temperance or self-control and add to temperance patience. You try sitting in traffic for four hours and see how much patience that you have after that. God is still teaching me about this thing called patience. I've always heard, never pray for patience because you'll be praying a long time. You'll be impatient paying for pr praying for patience. But uh, after patience, and again, that, I believe that is a uh, great uh, character of a Christian. It's, it's, it's just studying back and letting God have control and letting God uh, do, his, do his thing. And sometimes we want God to answer that prayer now. And we want him to you know, make sure that we, you know, we want to know our schedule. Well, we're not on our schedule. We're on God's schedule. And God sometimes has to teach us a lot of patience. Uh, and then after we, we learn patience and after we, we develop patience in our Christian life, uh, Peter says, listen, then you add uh, patience unto godliness. Uh, godliness, uh, I think of all the godly men and women that have come in my life. And, and again, I've been studying them and I've been watching them um, all my life. And I, and I see a difference and change. And, and I see these characteristics in, in their life. See, really great. Are you judging those people? Absolutely not. Listen, I understand what uh, Matthew chapter 7 says about judging people. However, we are all fruit inspectors. If we're going to call ourselves Christians, we better bear the fruit of a Christian. And we better bear uh, his spirit as a Christian. And, and some of the fruits that uh, people judge us by. Uh, and, you know, again, we're going to hold this book and say, yeah, I'm a Christian. You know, I believe in God. Well, one of the things that the lost world is going to, uh, it's going to compare us to are these characteristics that, uh, that Peter says. And, and my question to you is, are you living a godly life? Or, or, or are we living a life of hypocrisy? And after that, it says, and to godliness, brotherly kindness. When I got saved, there was a complete change in how I dealt with people. I was a absolute rebel. I, I did not like people, and people did not like me. I had an attitude problem. And, uh, and then the Lord broke my heart and, and started giving me a, a compassion for other people. And uh, I started, you know, again, developing, uh, again, I'm still working on it every day. But one of the things that we got to do is be kind to our brothers and sisters. One thing I, I, I hate to say is some of the meanest people that I know are out of churches. And that's just the plain truth. Um, I've never been hurt like I've been ever hurt than people inside the church. And again, I think it's a failure to, to look at this. And I'm sure I've hurt people, uh, you know, more so than they have ever been hurt more than lost uh, in the lost world or the world today. And we got to concentrate on being kind to one another. That's what's going to set us apart. And then here's here's the biggest thing. And then the brotherly kindness, charity. This has nothing to do with giving your money. This has to do with uh, this has to do with love. If uh, you go over the book of the Corinthians, um, I believe it's First Corinthians chapter thirteen. It talks about uh, the greatest of these three of hope, um, charity, and faith. Faith, hope, and charity. And the greatest of these things is is char is charity or love. You can have faith, you can have hope, but the greatest of these three is is charity, and that's and that's love. Again, um, you know, Christ loved us enough to die on on the cross of Calvary. We have to show that same love uh, towards other people. And uh, in verse eight, it says, "For if these things be into you and abound, they will make you ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ." Again, that's just barren fruit. Peter talks about great things we need to add on to it. It's not all thrown together at once here, okay? Uh, it's added on to one another, okay? You've got, um, you've got uh, uh, diligence and then add to your faith virtue, and then that builds on uh, knowledge and then temperance and then patience and then godliness and then brotherly kindness and then charity. It's all added and built on one another. You don't get it all at once here. Uh, for new Christians, I think they struggle with trying to get just the whole book, the whole Bible at once. You got to you got to work out your own salvation. It's on a daily walk with God, and again, I I'm not even close to this uh, to what Peter says here. 
there's a lot of attributes in my life that I just don't see uh, that are here. But I'm striving. I'm striving every day to try to meet what the Bible says here in terms of, you know, again, I'm a very impatient person. Uh, sometimes I'm not kind to one another. But, uh, you know, we all need to strive together and do this. And I think the more we get in God's Word, the better off we'll be. I hope that helps you. Uh, God bless. Uh, if you can comment, question, or uh, subscribe. God bless.